Hi, welcome to The Verge Mobile Show for the week of August 26, 2013. This is episode 60, which, if you are familiar with wedding anniversaries, is our diamond show. So uh, I hope everyone who listens to us has been uh, out shopping and looking for diamond jewelry for us and uh, plans to send it our way. But other than that, we've got a good show lined up for you. I'm Dan Seifert. I'm Vlad Savo. And bling bling, I'm Chris Ziegler. <laughs> I believe I believe the phrase is bling blau, Chris. Uh, bling and unfortunately, blau. Dieter still has better things to do than come be on the show with us. So. We're just not important in Dieter's life. You know. Yeah. It's a it's a sad sad fact of the matter. I do know that he's not in uh, he's not in his normal home base of San Francisco right now. I believe he's somewhere in the deep south. I believe he told me that he's. Uh, and he gave me some insane stat about how, how far into the middle of nowhere that he is right now. Uh, but he does have LTE service, which is impressive. D- does he really? Because the other day he said he was, uh, I believe yesterday, I received a note from him that he was on GPRS. And I was like, I believe he found the one spot in the U.S. that's still on GPRS. Well, you know, when I was doing the uh, the Tesla review earlier this, this year, I was driving through parts of California where, where there wasn't any service at all, which was completely... Nuts to me. Uh, you'd think that of all states, California would be completely blanketed, but you'd be wrong. Yeah. Well, okay, let, let, let's actually be honest. This has absolutely nothing to do with connectivity. I think Dieter is just building up a nice beard that is going to spring on us next week. That's what's happening. <laughs> He's building up a, uh, a wireless signal blocking beard that is yes. shutting and down his wireless connectivity. He's building up his lumberjack chops right now. He's, like, going to fill in the beard. He's going to, you know, pick out just an amazing selection of flannels. Uh, and uh, and suspenders, or or overalls. I, I don't know. I don't know which way Dieter leans on this on the suspenders versus over uh, overalls beat. But uh, I would I would I would love to see Dieter come on the show wearing overalls minus a shirt. No, nothing but a beard. I want I want Dieter on this program with nothing but a beard and a smile. Technically, Chris, you guys shared a hotel room recently, so you've probably seen it already. It's yeah. So let me tell you guys about this hotel room. <laughs> uh, Dude, we we, we were, there, man. I, I we thought were, it was serious in the wrong direction already. No, yeah. The, well, you know, we're just going to. First of all, what the story that I'm about to tell is not safe for work. Uh, if we have any children listening, please uh, avert your eyes and ears. Maybe uh, tune to a different station for a few minutes. Watch some uh, Sprout, which is that television for for toddlers. Which is good stuff. By the way, if you're like good half stuff. asleep. If you're if you're on a couch somewhere and you're half asleep and you turn on Sprout, it will freak you out, because it's just like it's like you know basically just colors and shapes and like really soft gentle music. It's it's insane. It messes with your mind. Which anyway. is to be honest, perfect for my level of intellect. Yeah, well, ditto. I mean, I, <laughs> I I'm not gonna lie. I've definitely watched it for multiple hours before. Um, but anyway, so so we were just uh, it, literally everybody in the company. Just returned from New York. New York. We were there for uh, the Verge All Hands meeting, where we talked about these amazing plans uh, that we have coming up over the next year. And uh, so we were staying at a at a nearby hotel, or a relatively new hotel. I think it just opened in the past few months. And we were staying to to a room. And my roommate was Dieter, whom I love. I've stayed with him at trade shows before. He makes a great roomie. Worked out really well, except for one thing. This is a sexy hotel, uh, and and what that means, uh, basically in a nutshell, is that the bathroom door is uh, semi-transparent. So uh, all of your bathroom activity, uh, be it toilet-related or shower-related, is is basically visible to your to your roommates. Um, so Dieter and I, that, I guess what I'm trying to say is Dieter and I got to know each other very well uh, this weekend. Um, and we're going to leave it at that. Also, to tie it into some freaky mobile technology in some fashion, the translucency can can sometimes remind you of iOS 7. Ah, <laughs> yeah. I like that. It never once asked, reminded me. I pulled us back. I pulled us back from the did? break of, you know, random. Was the translucency of the door tweaked at any time during your time there? Did it get more or less translucent for, you well, know, based on feedback? Up, you know? Well, the fonts definitely changed. Um, also, I want to point out 
that Dan, for some reason, that has not been explained to me, was in this amazing like penthouse suite with uh, Aaron Saporis, whom I'm sure... Look, I don't know how you guys haven't learned how far slipping somebody a $20 bill gets. <laughs> I mean, the, 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 but the place was nuts. I mean, first of all, you guys had... It, the Your mini bar was stocked with way more whiskey than ours, which I'm offended by. Yeah. Uh you had you had a, a bathroom where the door wasn't facing the rest of the room, so you could you could shower in privacy. It was great. Anyway, and so they were pu- they were pumping like this very faint, subtle but pleasing floral scent throughout the air conditioning in our room. Yeah, that was absolutely <laughs> unique to your room, Dan. Nobody else got the scent. <laughs> so while everyone else's room, uh, very very likely funked up over the weekend, uh, with as as Verge staffers, you know. Did their thing in there. Ours was nice and fresh all weekend. Yeah, that 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 wasn't a, a fragrance being pumped into the room, Dan. I think that's just your your natural scent. It's my natural aura. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So today we had some uh, Motorola stuff happen. We had our Droid Ultra and Droid Max review go live, uh, and David did those reviews for us. Um, and I took some time this weekend to actually play with and use these and. Uh, David wasn't very kind to it in the review, and I got to be oh, honest dude, with you. Oh, dude, his I review was him. brutal. Yeah, his I agree with him wholeheartedly. Like, I, I, I just, aside from Verizon's very specific, very obvious business interests, I can't come up with a reason for these phones to exist. Well, da- David Wait, came... I, I can summarize this really well. Uh, I haven't read the reviews. I haven't played with the phones. I play with the Mini, which actually seems, uh, the Droid Mini, which actually seems a tiny bit more optimistic a device than these ones. But what I can say, just scanning the review and looking at the scores, is the fact that the Droid Ultra plus the Droid Max, their collective score is just over 10. <laughs> uh, yeah, Out well, of 20. It, you know, I, so I, I think that this speaks to a couple things, right? One, it speaks to the fact that, um, uh, you know, design by committee is almost never a good thing. And this was obviously a device that, that was co-designed by Motorola and Verizon, and uh, and it's Verizon being Verizon and, and droiding up these devices that didn't need to be droided up, um, and they should have Verizon just should have taken the Moto X and been done with it. They, I mean, they they didn't need to do anything else. Um, but but David came up to me before we published this and he's like, "Can I get a gut check on this? Am I being too harsh?" And I'm like, "No, man. Like, <laughs> he you he was like, I, I I would never in my life tell anyone to buy either one of these phones. I'm like, well then." Give him, give him a bad score, um, and that's exactly <laughs> what he did. Well, uh, I mean, what really shocked me was I kind of expected the Ultra to 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 not be that great. You know, it's got this yeah. slimy plastic back. It's it's just thin for the sake of being thin. There's no real reason for it. Mm-hmm. But you know, at least with the Droid Max, you kind of expect it to be like the reason for it to exist is battery life, right? And while right. it w- offers respectable battery life, certainly lands on the good side of battery life. It's not the Droid Max battery life that I would have expected, especially not compared to last year's model. Last year's model, you know, two days, no problem. You know, two days of, like, real use you could get out of that phone without having to recharge it. Uh, and, and on our, like, uh, our rundown test, it lasted almost 13 hours, which was record-breaking, absolutely bonkers. And this year, you know, the, the rundown test is only managing eight hours. It's tapping out after just after a day of use. Uh, you know, it's really disappointing. Well, you know what bothers me uh, about it is, you know how the the back, I think the back of both of them is real Kevlar, but it's like, like you say, it's like slimy feeling on the the Ultra, and then on the the Max, it's the... It gives gives, gives Samsung a run for its money of the slimiest phone. Right. I I was just looking at that particular photo of the two backs, and I was going to ask which of them is the nasty-looking one. Can you actually get Kevlar and then that glossy disgusting thing that's going on on the same surface? Well, it... Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think one is, like... I mean, I, I don't know what the process is, but I think they might just have some sort of lacquer over the, okay. the Ultra, and then they, they don't apply that lacquer to the to the Max. That's my guess. I mean, I, I don't really know. But but what's, what's weird to me... I mean, it, it's both good and bad. I mean, if you look at the... Uh, David has a really good picture of it in his review. Uh, if you look yeah. at the, the bottom corners of the Max... You can see where the weave disappears at the at, right at the corners, and it looks really weird and kind of gross totally and amateur weird. hour. And and the, <laughs> the the reason why it looks like that is because they're literally sanding down those corners to form 
the the you know to to smooth and and form the corner of the back because it's made out of real Kevlar. So they can't fake the weave through the corner because they're actually sanding through it. So it's like it would have been cool if they had found a way to like still have real Kevlar but not do that because it just I mean it looks like a half finished. It looks like a prototype or something that somebody did. Totally themselves. did. Yeah, that's what I, when I first saw it, I was like, this can't be. This looks like it's half painted. Right. Yeah, it's really bizarre. Also, not made in Fort Worth, Texas, nor can you get a bright pink back with yellow buttons. Very solid points. Unfortunately, if you're a Verizon customer, you can't get any phone in bright pink with solid yellow buttons. But It's true. You can get a Moto X now. Oh, you can, no, yeah. No. That's actually, you no, know what? We'll, we'll segue right into that. So the Moto X will be available from Verizon this Thursday. Uh, you can order it online. You won't be able to buy it in stores yet. That's another, quote, coming weeks deal. Um, but you'll only be able to buy it in black or white. So if you're hoping to customize it, um, sorry, tough noogies. Uh, we've known for a while that AT&T has the, the customization exclusive. Unfortunately, we don't know how long that exclusive lasts. Uh, but if you want to get a Moto X on Verizon... You can do it starting this Thursday. If you want to buy a Motorola phone on Verizon, you should buy the Moto X this Thursday. Um, yeah. But you're going to have to settle for black or white. Which isn't that big of a deal, actually. I've seen a few of the black ones floating around the New York offices, and I was actually very impressed, you know, picking up and using the phone in person. The pictures don't really do it justice. Um, it, go ahead, Dan. Well, I was going to say that... Um, Pretty much everybody who has like seen a lot of pictures of it and read reviews and things and then goes and picks it up in person has said the same thing. I know, uh, uh, Chris, I believe the other week when you, you got to see uh, one of the review units we had, uh, he instantly tweeted that this thing feels amazing uh, as soon as he picked it up. So uh, I, I felt the same way. It, it, you really have to get it in your hands to, to appreciate the design of it. Yeah, yeah. it's the and it's it's a great you know, uh, so. Here's my conundrum with the Moto X. Um, actually, I'm really glad that you brought this up, Dan, because I have a story about this. So I, I, I got my customized review unit, and um, I was like, holy crap, this is the best feeling Android phone I've ever... Like, it's just... It hits the sweet spot in every conceivable way. Um, I have to have this phone in my life. Uh, so I switched... Like, right before I, I left for New York, I switched from my iPhone to the Moto X, uh, but I, I brought my iPhone with me just in case I had a, a change of heart halfway through the trip. Uh, so I went to New York with it, and on like day two, or I should say by day two, I was just so fed up with every app I was using on the Moto X that I just, I mean, I literally like, it was a snap decision. Like I just flew into a rage and switched back to the, I pulled the SIM out, put it back in my iPhone, gave the, the review unit to Ross because he wanted to try it, and moved on with my life. Like, it, it was that quick for me. Like, it, it just, I, I think I had some, like, weird bug in the Twitter app for Android that just pushed me over the edge. I'm like, screw this, this is ridiculous. <laughs> and then I, I left the platform. And, and you know what else? Uh, from the guys who've been using the Moto X around the office, um, we, we, we had somebody, Jordan, from our video team, he's using the Nexus 4. And he, he was saying, this is good, just give me LTE and a good camera, and I'll be happy. And then uh, I think it might have actually been Ross who was responding, well, there's Moto X, and then Jordan said, and a good camera, and he was like, oh, actually, I'm not going to say that. Because <laughs> the Moto X isn't going to give you that part. I was, it was funny, there was a, some sort of Twitter canoe going on uh, earlier today uh, between, I think, Josh and Dieter and Chris, you might have gotten pulled into it as well, uh, you know, saying how the Moto X, a Moto X Max would be, like, the perfect phone, because it, it uh uh, mm -hmm. alleviates any battery concerns. Uh, but I think a Moto X Max Pure View, I would sell my soul for. One that runs iOS 7, probably. <laughs> no, I don't mind Android. I, I use Android every day. I don't mind Android at all. But Moto so X Max me, Pure View would be an amazing phone to me. So what you're telling me, Dan, just to, just to make this perfectly clear, you want a Moto X with a giant circular hump on the back... Uh, and the, so the phone itself would already be like nine or nine and a half millimeters because it's a max, and then on top of that, you'd have a giant circular hump. You know, that's what you're looking for. If you're already going for the the nine and a half millimeters, why not just go all the way and you know step it up to eleven, get a giant circular hump, and and take amazing photos. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, 
the reverse of my experience with the Moto X is my experience with the Lumia 1020. Because the first time somebody handed that thing to me, I felt the hump on the back, and it just felt really weird and creepy. Like, I can't describe it. It's smaller than the hump on the 808 Pure View, but perhaps because it's just been cut flat uh, at the top, it feels weird and awkward in your hand. So that's well, the first heavy. thing you feel. Yeah, it's like all the weight is where that lens is. So when you're holding it, and it's a big enough device that, you know, you're holding, like, the bottom half of it, the top wants to fall backwards. Yeah, but it's just, like, really, really awkward in the hand. It feels really weird. So I actually think that if Nokia hadn't cut away from it, so if Nokia had actually gone and just made a really thick and fat phone and just stuck, filled the rest with battery, that might have been a better thing. I mean, it would have been a heavy phone. It would have been making more tank jokes, like with Lumia 920, perhaps. But still, like, the ergonomics of the 1020 are really, really weird and whack. And actually, uh, the 1020 that I played around with in New York, the processing with the pictures was a major issue for me. The processing speed, that is. So you take a photo, it takes a long, long time to get you back to take the next photo. So even if the 1020 takes amazing pictures, you know, if you can't take two or three in quick succession, it's kind of a major pain point, because that's the sort of thing you do with smartphone cameras. Right. Like, if you actually have the time to sit around and really frame your subject and think about your composition and balance things out, etc., etc., then you just kind of bring a camera with you, you know? Instead no, of a really no you phone. don't bring a camera. You bring a, a stupid snap-on Sony uh, RX1, whatever. That, that, that's what you want. You don't even front, Vlad. I know, I know you. You you mean the attachment, right? The Sony yeah. attachment. Yeah. So yeah, of course. Just so. just to clarify here, uh, our producer Evan, who since he's uh, making me clarify this, I'm going to also tell an amusing anecdote about him. Uh, following this, uh, you can actually use the smart camera app on the Lumia 1020 as opposed to the Pro camera app. The smart camera app does let you do like rapid fire burst pictures, which I don't think is what Vlad is talking about. Uh, yeah, rapid I mean, fire I just burst to be being quick. you hold the button down and it does like ten shots. You just want to be able to go snap, 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 snap at your at your command quickly and easily. Exactly. Um, exactly. And so uh, Evan actually has a lot of experience with the the 1020. Uh, I believe he bought one this weekend and then promptly dropped it uh, and shattered the front display into a million pieces. Uh, just because Dan, you, you shouldn't really be recording that story with a big grin on your face. Come on. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, well, we, Evan, but I we, think that we, is proof positive of the odd ergonomics of the. Well, we were network. we were just talking about this before we started broadcasting, and I was noting to these guys that when Evan dropped it, it shattered in such a way that uh, there's a there was a hole on the screen where you could see all the way down to the circuit board, which was like kind wow. of like, kind of like. Really like cyberpunk. Like I almost <laughs> wish he had just kept it and used it that way because it looked awesome. So it's not like it. It wasn't like you know when a lot of people uh, drop their phone or shatter their phone. They they have like a, a spider of cracks, but they could still touch the screen and use it and things like that. That it, that wasn't this case uh, with Evan, was it? No, no, it was. Like the screen worked. Uh, <laughs> it like it was insane. I like, and I don't know if that's because I'm, I mean, you could say that that's one of the advantages of of AMOLED over LCD is that you know, uh, it isn't. I don't know. I like I the, something about the architecture of the display allows it to continue functioning when it, when it's that busted. But whereas yeah. with an LCD, it just would have looked like a you know a weird liquid whatever. If, well, if that I mean, the, the pixels illuminate themselves. You don't have one consistent backlight, so right. you can't bust up the backlight on an AMOLED display. And I love this vision of a phone that looks like an exposed cyborg, like it's just been through the wars. Yes! And you can see you can see it's freaking motherboard and it's still doing things for you. It's a Terminator phone. So wait, did, did, did Evan swap that in the store or does it still have it? Because I think we could probably bid up the price on it. I believe he was able to make an insurance claim on it. So unfortunately... Well, fortunate for him, he has a new phone that works and it's not dangerous. And unfortunately for us, we don't have an art piece for the office. Damn. <laughs> uh, so uh, just to wrap up our, our discussion on Motorola, this weekend, uh, pictures of an alleged Droid 5 uh, leaked to the Internet. Um, and it's got a keyboard, as you might expect a Droid 5 to have, which is kind of, um, I feel like it's kind of like an endangered species these days. Sean Hollister must have fainted when he saw 
these leaked pictures. Sean Hollister, huge QWERTY hardware keyboard fanatic, very excited about the Droid 5. He will defend the QWERTY keyboard to the death long after it's, it's past its prime. His reaction was, please let this be real. Everybody else's <laughs> reaction was like, eh. Why does this exist? <laughs> Everyone yeah. else is like, why? <laughs> yeah. Sean is the, the reason thing why. is, LG there launched... are people like Sean who really like the physical keyboard and don't want to have to buy a BlackBerry. LG launched a slider QWERTY keyboard phone on Verizon, I think. Um, yeah. I was saying something like a week ago. Yes, but it was so right. freaking anonymous that I've got no idea what its model name is, what its specs are, how big the screen is. I just all I remember is, wow, there's a sliding QWERTY keyboard. I haven't seen one of those for two years. Uh, it I can't remember the name of it to be honest with you, um, but it, it sells for about twenty dollars on contract, so that can give you an idea of the status of that phone. Um, but you know, this Droid Five leak. You know, I would be surprised if it if it is real and it is legit, and Verizon does decide to buy it. I'd be surprised if we didn't see it hit shelves like October, November for the holiday season. Oh, I'm hey, sure, you I'm guys sure. re- probably even sooner. Do you guys remember the Droid Three? Uh, yeah, that was horrible. It's was, it like the most hilarious project of all time. No, no, the like, most no, the most hilarious thing was that the Droid One was released in November of like 2009. I believe it lasted about 10 months on the market or so, and then for the fall. Of no of 2010, we saw the Droid 2, and then like February of 2011, Droid 3 hits hits market, and it was like we had all these Droid phones come out in like less than the span that you could have owned one on contract it was like four generations of Droid phones. Right, but the, the the Droid 3 wasn't on the market for very long at all, right? Because it was, I think it was the last I think it was literally the last like major release of Verizon's that didn't include LTE. Right. Which would like at this point, I cannot even fathom what it would be like to use EVDO on my smartphone. <laughs> like the, you, the mere thought terrifies me. Do you remember the the R two D two edition of the Droid two? Oh lie, that was, man, that was pretty cool. Hey, <laughs> I broke that story. I I, <laughs> I scooped that phone. That was Listen, me. Chris two scoop scoop Ziggler. That's right. Breaking R two D two editions. That's why they call me Raisin Brand. <laughs> uh, sorry, that was really terrible. Um, I really wondering... needed a follow up question, but I'm not going to ask it. <laughs> uh, so I am uh, I am looking for this this phone. You say there was a Verizon release with a QWERTY keyboard? Yeah, it's an LG model uh, for Verizon. It's an Android phone. It's an Android phone. I know for a fact it it sells for twenty dollars on contract. I can't find I'm, Verizon. I've got to say, is. on the subject of these kind of semi-anonymous Android phones, on my way into New York uh, last week, while I was taking the air train from Newark, which is hands down the best sign I've ever seen. Okay, you're taking the air train, which is elevated, so essentially, if you step out of the doors and you're not at a station, you basically have a I don't know, 30 or 40 foot fall drop. Okay, <laughs> and there's a sign on there really prominently positioned saying, stay inside the train, tracks are dangerous. <laughs> and I, I just feel like that sign shouldn't be there. You know, we should have a bit of natural selection happening, so if anybody <laughs> needs the sign and has to step out, well, let them step out and, you know, see if they survive and uh, take their risks. But, but sorry, I, I, I was derailing myself there. What, what I was trying to say was, while I was on it, I saw a lady with something like a three-inch uh, display Android phone with big Sprint labeling on the front, and I just felt so sorry for her. Like, honestly, the, there was something inside me emotionally felt pain for the, for the thing that she's suffering through. So the, uh, the LG phone is the LG Enact. Uh, it features <laughs> 4G LTE, uh, QWERTY slide-out oh. keyboard, uh, I believe it's a 4-inch WVGA display. Um, but it's got a really big 2460 milliamp hour battery. So there you go. Guys, hang on. I think, I think I identified a phone that's still for sale on Verizon that runs Android 2.3. <laughs> hang if you can, well, no, wait, do they still sell the Palms? Because for a long time you could buy a Palm Pre 2 on Verizon, like on contract. And for a long time you could buy... A uh, what was that one Windows Phone Seven device they carried? You could buy it for like two hundred dollars contract. The yes. HD Trophy. 
Yes. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, uh, so I, I can't tell. I mean, the product pictures for this, it's the LG Spectrum. The, the product pictures for it on LG on Verizon's site clearly show a customized version of Android 2.3. Uh, I don't know if it's received an update since then. If not, Spectrum owners, my apologies. Uh, but then again, if you're using a Spectrum as your primary phone, you're probably not listening to the show. So uh, I would say that uh, if you're using a Spectrum and you bought it a year and a half or two years ago, I don't feel too bad for you. If you're using a Spectrum and you bought it yesterday, my apologies. Yeah. It, what's especially funny is that they, they sell the Spectrum 2. Like, Verizon sells both the Spectrum and the Spectrum 2 at the same time. Also, <laughs> you can currently... This is this is a hot deal, folks. You can get uh, an LG Intuition, also known as the Optimus View, for free on a two-year contract right now. How is this not a good deal on our site? I know, be, right? You know, no, one right. of the big Chris, hero stories. Chris, I've, I've beat you all because you can buy a BlackBerry Bold... Ninety nine thirty on contract for a hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is a good deal. <laughs> okay, and and I don't really know which American holiday is the one that makes you do good things for other people. Uh, pick one. Maybe it's Thanksgiving. Maybe it's Christmas. Whatever. But I think for sure our listeners do. and viewers, the task should be find an ill informed person and save them from buying one of these devices. <laughs> Like everything we just talked about for the past five minutes, put that on the list, find somebody who wants to buy one of those, dig them up on like a web forum asking about it, and save them. Please. What year did the 9930 come out? That was 2011? 20, 20, what yeah, century so. did it come out? Never mind, year. It's like, it's literally two years old already. And you'd have to pay $100 to live with it for another two years. I don't know. This, this LG and Act is pretty tight. It, it has like the, you know... It's like the aesthetics of the uh, the original Galaxy S. Um, it's got a pretty nice looking keyboard. It it runs something newer than Android 2.3. It's know only it's four years late in that case. Would you say Would you say uh, that the LG Enact is your next, Chris? It it probably is. Also, I want to point out that it has, d- dude. Okay, so it has a hard menu button, uh, but it it has adopted the look of the soft menu button in Android 4.0 in, in Holo. So it's, it's just the three vertical dots, but they, like, LG took that and, and just made it part of the hardware <laughs> on the device. This is the, okay, wow. never, I, I don't want this phone anymore. <laughs> for, for a second, I was really stoked about it. The 5 megapixel camera looks pretty tight. Uh, anyway, let's, uh, enough about the LG and what, What's next? Uh, Before we go next, I, I just need to... I just need to register a quick complaint with Google for the fact that the Moto X doesn't seem to be coming to Europe, uh, or at least they haven't announced any plans, and that is bombing me out. Okay. Well, you know why not, Vlad? It's because they can't use the Made in America tagline there. Yes, it has no value there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like all you Europeans will just be, oh, like, you know, there's grubby Americans making these phones. We don't want these. <laughs> Well, no, there are actually some countries which consider the whole Made in America thing kind of a well, badge of prestige. To be clear, it's only the customized ones that are Made in America. The one you buy from uh, Verizon uh, is going to be made in China. So Right, and, and the thing is, Europe is between China and America, so it's, so it's kind of like, <laughs> you know, you don't even have to land. Just airdrop some of them. <laughs> you know, just like sprinkle motor waxes across Europe and be like, let's see what happens here. <laughs> because, because I think people will be into that phone, like, for me. Do you think Moto X trees would grow? Like if they sprinkled them from the air? Metaphorical ones, trees of love (laughs) for the new design. I mean, I'm serious. Like, the bezel on the front is really, really nice. Like, the bottom bezel in particular is so thin that it really, uh, having the software buttons for Android, they're pretty much exactly where you would have them when they used to be capacitive. But it's screen, you know? So when you're looking at, like, a video, a picture, that is filled up with image. And one of the things that really stands out, and everybody's been saying it, but until you like put the thing in your hand, you just don't appreciate it. This is like a 4.7 inch display, right, Dan? Yes, 47720p. Yeah, and and it feels like it's just marginally bigger than the iPhone. Like it feels like the HD One Mini, which has mm-hmm. a much smaller display. So the whole 
Okay, because everybody has been saying this. They've been saying this with laptops as well. We have a 14-inch display in the footprint of a 13-inch laptop, and then you look at it, and it's like, well, it's, it's the same thing. It doesn't feel that different. But like a 4.7-inch display, I've never seen it in, in a device that small, and that is really nice and impressive. Yeah. Uh, somebody, I can't remember who, it might have been, um, might have been Evan Rogers, our our podcast producer, somebody was showing me, yeah, in fact, I'm pretty sure it was, he was showing me uh, an HTC First, which has a 4.3 inch display, up against a Moto X, and uh, they're, the, the outlines of the two devices are basically indistinguishable, despite the fact that uh, the Moto X has 0.4 inches on it. Yeah, so, that's so I've got the first right here. There's the first there, and there's the iPhone 5, and they're well, the first is a bit bigger than the iPhone 5, and then the Moto X is a bit bigger than both of those. But that's the point. Like, I've been hating on 4.7-inch displays because they make for such big devices. If you can fit that display in something that's about the size of the first, then I stop complaining. Like, you're giving me more for my money. I'm happy. Unless right. I can't buy it, <laughs> which I can't. So I'm not happy. So I've just been thinking about this concept of Motorola drop shipping Moto Xs throughout uh, Europe and like thinking about the the nightmare apocalypse scenario of these these robber baron gangs like scooping up all of the supplies with like machine guns and then and then charging like extraordinary amounts for them uh, uh, to the to the poor groveling people that want want to own Moto X's. I think you've been watching Castle in the Sky, the anime from Japan. Yeah, I, I don't know what I don't know where that nightmare scenario came from, Dan. I, I <laughs> well, like you know when. When when the they airdrop like uh, uh, food supplies for people who are like refugees and like then like some like gangs come and take them all and then like charge you, lots of money. You realize that Europe is not particularly Western Europe is not a war torn wasteland, right? Oh oh, that, that is having but, propaganda dropped over it. But <laughs> if they know that they might have a chance at a Moto X, it might become such a wasteland. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> that's, the demand that's for the Moto X. <laughs> might, that's might, a, might bring some apocalyptic scenarios. That's a bold prediction. Well, Vlad, I, I do have one really exciting piece of news for you, which is that uh, Motorola has promised a developer edition of the uh, the Moto X, which presumably you will be able to buy off contract if you're so inclined. So that's developer exciting. edition meaning... Oh, man, that sounds good. Yep. <laughs> so, so, it's, so I get the good stuff on the outside, and I get the tweakable stuff on the inside. That... That is thumbs up for me. Also, I just want to say this. The only problem is it won't work with your LTE. We, well, yeah. again, in the UK, our LTE situation is really sketchy anyway. Um, I'm going to bitch about that next year, I promise. <laughs> this year, the carriers stink, so the phone manufacturers get away with it. But I just want to say, to me, when Motorola were talking up their whole premise of, it's not about specs, it's about real-world use, blah, 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 Honestly, I just I just wasn't buying it. I thought it was marketing spiel, but I do feel like this phone has a few of these usability things, which you, again you have to pick it up and use it. it Motorola has done a few of those things right, uh, and you know what? Nobody's going to remember the specs uh, in a few months anyway. I mean, I don't remember them off the top of my head right now. So. Well, I you know I I I have believed in that mantra ever since Windows Phone Seven because that that's the message that they've been pushing since day since Microsoft has been pushing since day one. I think they've kind of, I mean, ever since the first Windows Phone Seven hit uh, devices hit the market, they've kind of put their money where their mouth is in terms of performance, yeah. right? Like you, you've never used a Windows Phone and said the performance on this sucks. Like they have all of the performance advantages of iOS, the problem is that they don't have the app, so the, you know, the Moto X kind of like doesn't have the buttery smooth performance of iOS, but has all the apps. So it's <laughs> it's a trade-off, uh, but it's it's certainly you know if you compare the performance of the Moto X to say a Galaxy S4 or an HTC One, I don't think that you're going to say this phone feels way slower. I don't think anyone's going to say that. That's correct. Yeah, and actually I have a killer segue right now. Uh, oh, I was which conceiving is to say. the segue. It's all ready to jump in and segue. Why are you guys fighting over the segue? Nobody fight over the segue. You wouldn't, you wouldn't use a, re a real segue sitting on the sidewalk. You wouldn't fight over that. Don't fight oh, over the shit, word segue. Oh, shit, yes, I would. <laughs> that would actually be kind of fun. I mean, I would crush it within, like, 20 yards, but I, I, would, I would fight over it. Just, just to, like, get on board. 
Okay, we'll do the segue, then we'll freaking segue back to the Moto X, and then we'll do Dan's segue. I think that's fair. <laughs> oh, okay. But it's just a very brief thing, which is to say that the Moto X really only has like a couple of weeks in which it can be the real standout mobile device, right? Maybe not even a couple of weeks, because if is coming up in Berlin, we know mm-hmm. Samsung and Sony are going to do some new devices, Galaxy Note. Sony has got a new flagship coming. Those might not be enough to overshadow the Moto X, particularly in the United States. But then right. September 10th is the date we can anticipate to see the new iPhone, when we expect to see iOS 7 release in public, etc., etc. Maybe iPhone plural. Right, right. And that's when the Moto X is going to have uh, a bit more of an issue. And that you know what? is when we should bring it to Europe, so we can keep it going. And, and you can't get the Moto X in gold. You cannot get the Moto X in gold. Or sh- uh, champagne. <laughs> Just Campania. just get it in yellow and I don't know, like dirty it up a bit. <laughs> well Chris ordered his custom was in yellow, and he can attest that it does get very dirty. Uh, but I don't believe it turns gold at all. Uh no, I've never had a phone that I was rubbing turn gold. <laughs> never that has never happened. You don't have the Midas touch, Chris. I, I don't, I don't. Now it, let me take a, a quick informal poll of the two of you. Are either of you even remotely considering a purchase of the Champagne iPhone 5S? No. Uh, I'll say this. Uh, as the, I, I've, I was saying this to some colleagues earlier, and I own an iPhone 5, uh, and if everything that has leaked or rumored about the iPhone 5S comes true, I've never been less excited to buy an iPhone. Uh, like, I, I, I just don't feel... Like, I don't really want to buy the new iPhone unless something is completely different, like uh, the, the camera technology is completely different and blows me away, or, you know, the, the next processor's been rumored to be, you know, whatever X percent faster. Uh, and I think they're saying is, 30%. It's like which 34% is like, faster or something. How do you even measure that anyways? But, you know, the which doesn't sound a whole heck of a lot to me. It's not like, mm-hmm. like when I went from my 4S to my 5, the first thing I said with my five is like, "Holy crap, this thing's fast." Yeah. Um, uh, but you know, I and so in that case, I don't really have any interest in the five S. Period. And if I did have interest in the five S, I'm going to say I'd wait until I, I we actually see what this gold looks like officially, and how yeah. Apple sells it to me because they'll probably put some marketing spin on it and make me really want it. Yeah, this does sound like a, a, a very iterative device, right? It's going to have a marginally better camera, a marginally better processor, uh, probably the same body and display, uh, and we're hearing a lot of noise about this biometric sensor built into the home button, right? And and that might be it. And and maybe it's it, there's some something wireless too, whether it be NFC or who knows? They're, they're, like with every generation of iPhones, going all the way back to like the the 3GS, there's been rumor, there, there's been a rumor or two of integrating wireless technology into it. Um, wait a second, a, a phone is wireless technology. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> Extra wireless. Uh, yes, more wireless technology. Uh, so, and if that is the case, I, I think that um, yeah, I'm not gonna be too excited about it. the 5C. Is interesting. I'm I'm excited about you know finally seeing an iPhone in a bunch of official colors, um, but then again, I wouldn't want a mid-range iPhone, so. Uh, but I'm definitely about not buying a Champagne. Actually, this this uh, this gray one that's rumored now looks kind of interesting, although that seems like the least plausible of the the rumored colors. I, I wonder yeah. if that's maybe just like a, a pre-production chassis that hasn't been, you know, completely colored or something. I don't know. It, like, it looks like unfinished metal to me. So, yeah, yeah. Which I, I'm not sure if that's actually production. Right. So. Well, the thing for me with, with the iPhone 5 is it, it, it is pretty, but then, like we mentioned previously, everybody has managed to scratch up the edges on the damn thing. So if the big selling point with the iPhone 5S is aesthetics, if it's like a nice, pretty gold paint job, and I've got to say, the idea of a gold iPhone seemed so outlandish. Uh, I wasn't buying it for a long time, but then we saw the leaked pictures, and it's a really subtle gold. It's kind of... Uh, it's very desaturated. It's kind of like a silver with a tint of yellow to it, essentially. Champagne. Right. Champagne. Champagne. Uh, listen, man, not every one of our or listeners is familiar with champagne. and Prosecco alcohol. for our Italian listeners. Right. Or sparkling wine for our American listeners. <laughs> or uh, Corona Light for our, our Mexican <laughs> 
<laughs> or, or Miller Miller High Miller Highlight for our Wisconsin listeners. What, what <laughs> color is uh... and Labatt Blue for our Canadian? Canadian <laughs> <audience>. <laughs> what, what color is that uh, PBR beer or whatever it was? The blue ribbon. Um, uh, that is the color of urine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you talking about Red Bull? <laughs> no, PBR. I think it's called oh, PBR. Yeah. Paps Paps Blue Ribbon, uh, is yep. what that is called, Love Lad, which is. Uh, and just to make sure a that horrible beer. Just to put that exactly. In. Just to make sure that we're not actually promoting or endorsing the use of beer beverages. Everything we just discussed is garbage. So don't drink. Uh, Miller High Life. Save your is, money and get a good phone. Miller High Life is the champagne of beers. <laughs> This is true. You should save your money and buy better beer. <laughs> I fix, fix that for you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm not going to even try to go back to my segue because we would have had to jump back no, like come on. four Dan, topics. You can't, you can't tease me like that. You can't tease oh, well, we were that. talking about Windows Phone somehow, about the performance yeah. of Windows Phone. And so today AT&T confirmed that it is offering the Loki Lumia 925 starting on September 13th in what might be the coolest looking Windows Phone I've seen yet. Like, it's in this, this custom, all black. It's like, it just, like, brings me right back to when the black iPhone 5 was announced. And Dang. I was like, holy crap, that looks totally murdered out and awesome. And makes me really want one. I'm going to the Verge.com to look at that picture now. It is, it is a tight-looking phone. And here's the thing. I, I mentioned this on Twitter this morning. If you're on AT&T and you're seriously considering a Windows phone device... Uh, I, I, I'm hard-pressed to recommend a $300 on-contract on, on 1020 over a $100 on-contract 925, especially when the 925 has a passable camera and is the best-looking Windows phone ever made. Yes, the ergonomics on the 925 outclass the 1020s. Like, it, it, it's not even a comparison. Uh, right. they're, they're so much nicer. And what was surprised me was if you've seen the T-Mobile version of the 925, T-Mobile's had it for a couple months now. They offered in the white and silver color variant that we've seen quite a bit before. Uh, they slapped a giant T-Mobile logo right below the capacitor's keys, and is like the most tacked-on, garish-looking thing ever. Uh, and surprisingly, surprisingly for AT&T, uh, there's this tiny little globe in the upper left-hand corner. So they showed a bit of restraint in. Um, plastering their, their logo all over the device. Well, you know why yeah. that is? Yeah. You know why that is, Dan? It's because they were debating, you know, they're like, well, you know, we, we have, like, a really wide but but not very tall area below the capacitive keys, so do we want to just, like, squash <laughs> the, the globe and make it, like, you know, an oval? Do we want to, like, change the AT&T logo for this and just make it all the way across, or do we want to, like, keep it a circle? And ultimately, they decided not to... Uh, disparage their own logo by squashing it. <laughs> that was the only thing that drove their decision. I mean, they could have really lobbied for Nokia and Microsoft to let them put the globe in the position of the start key. <laughs> <laughs> you think they could have. Or, or they could have lobbied to make the phone way, way taller so that there's a giant black area <laughs> below the capacitive. So I they mean, could put like... You know, like a four-inch diameter. Glow Ver on Verizon did etch its logo into the home button on the Galaxy Note 2. So that, like, I don't think that would be like totally out of the out of uh, possibilities. No, the the the, the next step is, um, the, you know, these phones will detect silence during phone calls and then whisper Verizon in your ear between <laughs> words. <laughs> it's like the ultimate branding. It's just always in your ear and your face. Yeah, instead of in, instead of uh, when you dial a number, instead of hearing a, a conventional ringtone, you hear Verizon is connecting you. Verizon <laughs> is connecting you. <laughs> okay, you guys, these these are just I don't know diamond ideas as far as the marketers are concerned. So I hate you for just coming up with them because we we're gonna find them in some freakish phone, you know, a couple uh, years down the line. Yeah, unfortunately. Well, yeah, I was just thinking. Uh, you know, they could also do a thing where, like, that when you press a number on the dial pad, the the uh, the um, the DTMF tone is is like a, it just says Verizon, but in in the right DTMF tone. But then I was thinking, you know, what if what if three did that? Because that would just be really confusing. Because every number you press would just go three 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 three. So you got you can't apply that to every operator around the world. <laughs> Fortunately, nobody makes phone calls anymore, right? That's true. Uh, so, you know, the other actual same point that I wanted to make with the 925 on AT&T is that AT&T has once again positioned itself as, like, the Windows phone carrier in the U.S. They've got the 920, 
the 925, the 1020, they've got, like, multiple lower-end models. They carry as many Windows Phone devices as, you know, other carriers offer a range of Android devices. So, um, yeah, if you want a Windows Phone, chances are you're probably shopping at AT&T. AT&T is doubling down on Windows Phone. Doubling down hard. Yep. I was actually yeah, surprised. Sure, that the surely that, that isn't too really expensive AT&T's Android range, right? I mean, maybe it chops off things like the original Spectrum. I mean, at the end of the day, though, 85 or 87 percent of AT&T sales are still iPhones. So I, I don't know how much AT&T really cares. Yeah, I mean, we, we've discussed this previously, where we've, we've mentioned that uh, BlackBerry would get some carrier support just out of the fact that carriers want more competition among manufacturers. They don't want to be forced to choose between Samsung's big device and Apple's big device, right. uh, which seems to increasingly be the situation at the moment. Just on 925, I agree with you, Dan. That is a really nice and slick uh, black look. But I'm seeing uh, those three dots. They look like they might be for wireless charging, perhaps? Yeah, so the 925 actually um, has a, uh, a snap-on wireless charging case, which is the yeah. dumbest thing ever. Uh, but yep. those three dots on the back of it enable it to enable the snap-on case to communicate with the phone's battery and charge wirelessly. But it does not do wireless charging out of the box. Right. And, it and looks that's true with the T-Mobile version too. With that, yeah, it's not, it, that's not unique to the AT&T model. Right. Yeah, the 925 looks horrible with that uh, snap-on case because it only grabs the corners of the phone. It's just like so weird. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah, it's bizarre. I remember that. It, it is pretty ugly, so we can just kind of move on. Uh, <laughs> can we, can we <laughs> talk about ugly? Can we talk about garish branding again? So I don't actually have this in our topic list, but uh, we mentioned last week that Verizon was picking up the HTC One finally, uh, and one of our staffers, Chris Welch, went out and bought one. He's been waiting for it for a long time. He went out and bought it, and uh, you know, I told him jokingly, like, "Oh, you could probably, you know, get some light acid or whatever, and and, and take off that that Verizon logo that's on the back of it with just a little bit of friction." And it turns out that the logo is actually, like, etched into the metal. <laughs> so you can, it has this <laughs> massive Verizon logo and 4G LTE logo, like, enormous things that you cannot, like, e feasibly remove. You can scratch I, the Beats logo off. Like, the Beats logo comes off with your fingernail. Verizon logo is not going anywhere. But if, if they were serious about it, they would have backlit the Verizon logo so that whenever the phone's on, it lights up. Or, like, they could use it as a notification light, you know, where the Verizon logo pulses when you get a, a, an email. And they're just not being creative enough. They need to hire me as their CMO. Well, clearly, That's what I'm, I'm saying, their... Chris. You're turning this into a freaking marketing <laughs> brainstorming session. I, I mean, clearly, the delay for Verizon to get the HTC One was so that they could figure out how to apply the logo and not let you remove it. Yeah. And no. mission accomplished. My... Just Hats no, off. stop that. That's off. God, you guys are terrible. <laughs> uh, so what do you guys want to talk about next? You want to talk about some BlackBerry? Wall Street oh, no, Journal? Before we talk about that, I want to yeah. I want to transition into an anecdote that has nothing to do with anything. Um, so I'm always up for those. So. On uh, it was a Thursday or Friday last week, uh, Chris Grant, uh, editor in chief of, of Polygon, our sister site, was uh, was in town in New York, and he was showing me his iPhone five, which he detests. Uh, because it, uh, he has to charge it four times a day. Apple says that it's within spec. They won't swap it out. It's it's insane. But the phone is, like, physically bent. Like, it looks like a, a boomerang. Like, I, I don't know how this happened, but the, the phone, like, is... is um, the, the antenna, you know, the uh, the metal edge is bent on the side, like, at, like, probably a 5 or 10-degree angle. And, and, he, and he took it to the Genius Bar... And they were like, well, did you have it in your pocket? He's like, yeah. And he's like, y you're not supposed to put the iPhone in your pocket. And, and, <laughs> and, and he just looks at them like, what? And, and sure enough, if you go to Apple's support site, there is a thing somewhere buried in Apple's documentation that's like the iPhone is not meant to be put in a pocket. This is like a real thing. This is like, this is so Apple. This is like when the iPhone 4 came out and... Uh, uh, you, they had all the issues with the antenna gate, and people were holding it, doing the death grip. And then Apple told everyone that you're holding it wrong, and that you need to hold the phone like this or whatever it was, so that you don't block the uh, uh, antennas. So right. I, yeah, I totally, totally grip. believe this. The two finger grip. That's the only way you hold your phone. That's perfectly reasonable, rational. But there is actually an even earlier precedent for this. 
which was the HTC Nexus One. That was one that uh, a whole bunch of people had issues with the screens cracking. Uh, I mean, it was the original Nexus device, and HTC on a support side, just like Apple, was saying, you're not supposed to put it in your pocket. And then everybody kind of had a backlash about it, saying, what the hell are you guys talking about? This is nonsense. The original HTC Nexus One had so many hardware issues. I don't know of anyone that owned one and didn't have to have their like power button replaced. And then the screen started like disintegrating. Doesn't matter. It had an RGB trackball. That's all that matters. This is true. That was high quality. That was yep. pretty awesome. That was that was hype, is what it was. It was <laughs> straight up hype. And we haven't seen another Nexus device by HC since. I think that's uh, Google just being kind of vengeful. Yeah. Google Play edition of the of the one, bro. Not a Nexus device. Oh, Evan Evan wants us to know that uh, that the Nexus One was beefy, which, by the way, is a new adjective uh, that he is using and Sam Sheffer uh, is using. I don't know if this is like a new trend or if they're trying to start a trend, but if something is good, you say it's beefy. Stop trying to make beefy happen. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. <laughs> So okay, now we can talk about BlackBerry. Blackberry. Yeah, let, let's do the professional so, thing. Uh, we'll start with the, the news today. The Wall Street Journal reported that uh, the that BlackBerry is looking to spin off BBM or BlackBerry Messenger into its own separate company um, mm-hmm. as it goes through its various ways of identifying how it can sell itself apart and, and make a bunch of money. Uh, but it, separating BBM just seemed, like struck me as like the oddest thing. It's like the one thing of value left in the company, right, that, that really, like, has a lot of users, uh, people are really into it, and has a brand name. Uh, and they finally got to the point where they're, we're almost at the point where you can use it on iOS and Android, they said, by summer, and, well, summer's almost over, so. Um, and, and, and now they're looking at, at spinning it off into a separate company. So the, the latest rumors peg WhatsApp at a roughly $1 billion valuation, uh, and I can't imagine at this point BBM is, is worth any more than WhatsApp. I mean, the, the user base just isn't there, right? Well, do you know how so, many users WhatsApp has? I know BlackBerry will say that, uh, depending on you know the phase of the moon, BBM has anywhere from 60 to 72 million active users. And WhatsApp, I don't know, but it, it wouldn't surprise me if it was that high. Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me either. I'm looking yeah. right now. But, uh, but in any case, I, I I find the whole thing kind of. Um, because, like Dan was saying, BBM is the big value and the big appeal. Of, um, 300 million users. <laughs> wow. So, so WhatsApp is way bigger than BBM. So, but the, but the one thing I can say is that you know WhatsApp should be way bigger because it has multi-platform support that's not tied to hardware. Like BBM could have been way bigger if BlackBerry had decided to make it multi-platform two years ago. Oh, yeah, and no, apparently. BBM. Yeah, Apparently, absolutely. according to the Wall Street Journal's report, they've had working internally uh, multi-platform support in BBM for as long as as early as long ago as three years ago, and they just decided not to release it yet. And they even had desktop versions that you could message BBM users from your desktop, and they decided not to release it. You know, BBM is is BlackBerry's Microsoft Office, right? Because Microsoft <laughs> has had Office working on the iPad, like a full-blown version of Office on the iPad for, what, a year and a half, two years, something like that? Uh, maybe less than that, a year and a half for a year. And it still isn't out? It's the exact same situation. Well, it's, it's not perfectly analogous, because Microsoft charges for Office. Microsoft... Um already kind of gets income from it. But the point I was uh, trying to build up and then you guys completely stomped all over was that BBM as a value and as, and as an asset to BlackBerry just makes perfect sense as a selling point for BlackBerry devices. Like just isolating BBM, it, it becomes far less clear how you're going to monetize and get cash well, out of the asset. I can, I, I can tell you how BlackBerry thinks it's going to monetize uh, BBM. Yeah. It thinks it's going to do it through the channels these new channels that it can sell to advertisers and sell to brands, and they can own them. Uh, but that's I, that just seems like a, a really long shot to me. Um, so, I mean, at the same time, fair enough. If you go into uh, take away the exclusive to BlackBerry devices, then, then you are actually taking away that uh, big selling point. You know, you, you're not going to sell a device on the basis that they have BBM if iOS and Android have it as well. Uh, so I, I, can to- I can totally see the point that Chris is making about BlackBerry intentionally dragging his feet. But at the same time, 
nobody else is going to sort out BlackBerry's future. It's up to them, you know. It's up to Thorson and Heinz and those guys to actually make a final decision at some point instead of waiting for some really, really bored millionaire or billionaire to come in and buy them up. Chris, didn't you tweet something earlier today that uh, uh, the ultimate troll would be if Thorsten Hines used his the $3 billion BlackBerry has in the bank to make a game system? Yeah, I don't know if I necessarily call it a troll. I'd just be like, it'd be like the ultimate... Solid, you'd call that solid financial advice for BlackBerry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it would just be, I mean, think about it. It's like the ultimate YOLO move, right? Like, uh, Torsten just throws $3 billion at, like, trying to win at gaming out of the blue. Like, nobody sees it coming. They call it the black box, okay? Think of how hot of a That's name good. that would be. Yeah, right? Thank you. But and you then, know they would call it the play box. Playbox, you would call it whatever you want. It's not going to sell any anyway. But it, it's going it, to, you know, it would be murdered out. It'd be like maybe twice the size of a of an Ouya. They could they could hype that it's BlackBerry 10 powered. Have these like insane uh, controllers for it that like have like this um, hinge in the middle so that you can rotate them like this for no reason. Like it, it would just be it would be the most insane device ever created. Uh, and they could do it for the three billion dollars that they have in the bank. No question about it. I mean, Chris, you clearly put a lot of thought into this. You should whip up a, a PowerPoint deck. There are two things that I think about a lot, Dan. One is Verizon's marketing strategy, and two is BlackBerry's video game console. Those are, <laughs> those are the only two things I think I spend a lot of time thinking about. And only one of those is fantasy. <laughs> yes, that's, that's true. Okay, you guys need to make sure you're well-seated and prepared because we've got a kick-ass kick segue. Okay, uh, boom. Hit me with the segue. BlackBerry should come up with an Indiegogo campaign for his black books. Ah, uh, uh, well, ah. yeah, it's not a bad idea. Sure, I can see that. And then fail. <laughs> Ask yeah, for thirty-two and million dollars and only receive ten point two. Is that is yeah, that right. what you're segueing into, Vlad? Yeah, that's the one. The Ubuntu Edge, non-existent smartphone. I mean, I really think. I really think this was a marketing exercise more than anything. You know, I agree. I, I totally agree. You know, the I Ubuntu mean, guys, the head of software done in some fashion, some form back in January. They're still working on the software. You know that uh, they gave us a bunch of renders. They asked for you know orbital amount of money. They didn't get there. Nobody expected them to get there. But at least they got the name out there. The, the world's tiniest violin is playing for Mark Shuttleworth right now. <laughs> The dude is worth what? Uh, we said it on, on last week's show, I think, five or six hundred million dollars. Yeah. I mean, he can just, he can, you know, he can spill some loose pocket change on, on the floor of a grocery store, pick it up, and fund the, the edge. Yeah, I, I don't really think that this whole campaign set them back at all. Like, if you're Ubuntu and you, well, rather, if you're Canonical and you expected your phone to be funded by this campaign, uh, then you're making some really, really optimistic projections and forecasts. Like their, their roadmap would have been, we're going to have this campaign. If we actually get $32 million out of somewhere, well, we'll use the money. But our plans are just going along as if we're going to fail. That must be the way that they would have been planning it. So I don't think this set them back any. I think it was good promotion. They got a ton of coverage from a whole heap of people who typically don't really care about Ubuntu at all. Um, right. They got a bunch of interest. So, I mean... Frankly, even though the campaign failed, I think that boasted the chances of this phone actually becoming something. Because now, now people are actually aware of it. I mean, it, think about the, the Yola... What's the name of their phone now? Uh, I've just been calling it the Yola. Exactly. Well, uh, I, the, the best case scenario for the Edge or whatever device ultimately comes out of this project is, in, in you know, a blue sky scenario is still going to be like a developer, you know, a, a super For nerdy sure. developer sure. phone. It's never going to be a mainstream device, right? Yeah. Which is fine. I mean, that's all good. I'm, I'm cool with that. Are you cool with that? I'm cool. You're cool. Cool. Uh, we got one more thing on our topic list. Uh, we actually mentioned it this week, the HTC One Mini. You can uh, buy it on, at ATT as of this Friday. Uh, I got to play with it for a little bit, so um, and I really like it. Really big fan of it. The Mini? Yes, the One Mini is a great phone. It is, but I mean, it, the, the problem... Uh, so what is AT&T selling it for? How much? 100 bucks. 
Okay. Yeah, I mean, I was going to say that the, the Moto X, I'd rather have a Moto X, but then again, it's $100 more. Right, and I will say that the one mini gives you aluminum body, which is awesome. It gives mm-hmm. you front-facing speakers, which is, again, awesome. Uh, it gives you a 720p display. It's 4.3 inch, not 4.7, so it's a little bit smaller, but it's. I would argue it's a better quality display than the Moto X. And yeah. it's got a slightly better camera. Neither cameras are great. I would take the Ultra Pixel camera over the Moto X camera, though. Oh, the Moto X camera is so bad. Yeah. Like, it, I, I feel like, I seriously feel like Motorola went into the Moto X just, like, with a defeatist attitude. They're like, ah, we're Motorola. Like, <laughs> it, like people don't expect us to have a good camera. We don't know how to find a good camera, so we're just going to half-ass it, and people will be well, like, oh, yeah, it's Motorola. I mean, to, to be honest with you, there's only so many companies that make these camera imaging sensors, right? Like, they, they only have so many to choose from. That means that they are definitely or more than likely using the same image sensor as somebody else. But right. for some reason, they can't figure out the image processing to make that, Im- that image sensor sing. Right. Uh, and that's something that uh, you can see with the iPhone 5 is, like, the iPhone 5 technically does not have as good spec a camera or spec a lens as other phones on the market, but it consistently takes better photos in more difficult light situations just again and again and again and again and again very easily because its image processing is so good and so well done. Yeah. Uh, and Motorola just can't figure that out. No, all I've got to say is buy the Moto X, don't worry about it because in a week's time Sony's going to kick out this awesome camera accessory, you strap that on your Moto X <laughs> and then you're away. You've got beautiful, beautiful pictures and all those iPhone fools whose phone could actually fit into their pocket with his camera, <laughs> they can just, you know, go and do whatever they need to do. But yeah, you man. won't be worried about it. I am psyched about this Sony phone accessory. I, I would love it if they if they also come out with a phone with just no camera on it, like super high-end phone, no camera, and just saying, we believe in this thing. Like, that would be ballsy. It won't happen, but it would be nice. You know, I wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me. Sony's been known to do just really weird, high-end, niche hardware. Raleigh. Right. I know it's pronounced Rolly, but I prefer Raleigh. I've always called it Raleigh, and I'm going to continue to do so. <laughs> that sounds like a very Midwestern way of pronouncing it. Yeah. I would also throw the PS Vita in that category, but then that got a price cut, so it actually has a chance now. Do you remember the uh, the personal media players that they had a couple years back that had these, like, you know, graphite edges and everything like that? They were, like, super well-designed. Nobody bought them, of course, because an iPod is a, a million times more usable, uh, but they looked awesome. And they probably only played A-Track files. <laughs> no, they only had, like, you know... Four gigabytes of internal memory for A track files, so you can play four songs yeah. that you had trouble finding four A track songs to actually play. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you guys remember uh, that old the 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 digital Walkman that looked like a pen? Is like it, yeah. I think it's available in like 32 and 64 megabyte versions in the late 90s. That uh, was a shit. Yeah, no, it was awesome, and it was super expensive. I, I spent like I spent like two years. Of of a hard earned like summer job, cash on that thing. I think I want to say it was like three ninety nine or something insane like that, and or at least it felt insane at the time. Um, but the 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 interface for getting music onto this thing was just completely absurd because it was this like you know of course it was a custom Sony app that you had to put on your Windows machine and uh, it only supported a track. So if you wanted to put an MP three on there. You had to import it into the Sony app, which converted it to a DRM encoded A track uh, that you had to check out to put on the, the the Walkman. And once it was checked out, you couldn't do anything else with it. So like it it, t- it basically took your rights to your M- your own MP3s away from you. It was amazing. It was the most Sony thing ever ever produced. It was beautiful. I still have that player, by the way. Um, I don't have a, a, a piece of software that, that can put music files on it, of course, so I'm stuck listening to um, some Sammy Hagar album for the rest of my life. <laughs> but, uh, and of course, it only fits one album on it, so it's just... And it was, pro- it was probably like a late 90s Sammy Hagar album, too, right? Yeah. Like, not even like, one that you'd want to listen to. It, I think it was his first post-Van Halen album. I can't remember the name of it. Um, but it was... It was, yeah, it was a very special album. Yeah, this entire conversation is happening way above my head. Not a Sammy Hagar fan? 
He's I was aware of his existence until like right now. What? I, I you know, I, I'm done. I'm done. I don't want to hear this anymore. <laughs> and with that, that's a wrap for the Verge Mobile Show episode 60 for the week of August 26. Um, as always, if you want to check us out, you can follow us on Twitter. I'm DC Seifert. If you really want to follow Vlad, who doesn't know who Sammy Hagar is, he is uh, Vlad Savov. Chris is Z Power, and Dieter, who maybe someday will eventually join us again, uh, is Backlon. And of course, you can leave comments on the posts. We love to read your comments. We always do. So uh, until then, until next time, see you guys. Bye.